All right, hey everyone. So um, I had a challenge issued to me in my goal to raise money to provide free CPR and first aid training to members of the Philadelphia community. Let me quote it. If you can tell me how CPR will stop violence, I'll donate. So I'd like to go ahead and address that and I will hold you to that, sir. I will look forward to your donation. So um, I'm going to point out how it will stop violent deaths first. Not how it will stop violence, but how it will stop violent deaths. Deaths as a result of violence first. I'd like to start with a study that was um, published by the United States Army, the uh, U.S. Army Center for Lessons Learned, Operation Just Cause Medical, says the following about combat lifesavers in Panama combat. So here's the quote from the U.S. Army. Troopers from the 82nd Airborne Division consumed both canteens of water on their long flight to Panama and were unable to replenish them before they jumped. Once they jumped, it took the dispersed units up to two hours to get to their rally points, and due to tropic heat, the troops arrived completely wet with sweat. Several soldiers became dehydrated and or suffered from heat injuries. Uh, we would call that heat-related illness. Um, the combat lifesavers were able to treat them immediately and probably saved many lives. Now, that doesn't put a statistic on it, but probably saved many lives. I don't think the Army makes statements like that lightly. Now, these are combat lifesavers, not combat medics. These aren't people with specific medical expertise. This is soldiers. These are they're paratroopers, standard paratrooper, regular 11 Bravo soldiers who were given some first aid training. That's a combat lifesaver. Um, and they were able to save the lives of their compatriots. There is something called the trauma chain of survival. That is uh, the, the, the things that must happen, the chain of the string of events that must happen to ensure that a person does not die as a result of a trauma they have surf suffered. The first link in the trauma chain of survival is early first aid. I'm going to post a picture to that somewhere on the screen so you can see that for yourself. Early first aid is the first thing that needs to happen to prevent deaths in traumatic incidents. This study is called, Are Pre-Hospital Deaths from Trauma and Accidental Injury Preventable? A direct historical comparison to assess what has changed in two decades. And this was published in 2017. Um, I can provide a link if you'd like the conclusion of this. I'm going to quote the conclusion paragraph. The number of potentially preventable pre-hospital deaths remains high and unchanged. First aid intervention of any kind is infrequent. There is a potentially missed window of opportunity for bystander intervention prior to the arrival of the ambulance service with simple first aid maneuvers. This study is called Pre-Hospital Deaths from Trauma, Are Injuries Survivable and Do Bystanders Help? Conclusion paragraph says, a high number of pre-hospital deaths from trauma occur with injuries that are potentially survivable, yet first aid intervention is infrequent. Following injury, there is a potential window of opportunity for the provision of bystander assistance, particularly in the context of head injury, for simple first aid maneuvers to save lives. Simple first aid maneuvers like maybe packing a gunshot wound. Um, okay, next one. This study is by the National Institutes of Health. Um, could bystander first aid prevent trauma deaths at the scene of injury? Um, this one, the conclusion, well, let's, they reviewed 112 cases that they had full ambulance care records, hospital records, and autopsy details. Um, this was conducted in 2003. The study was conducted in 2003. This was published in 2007. Uh, five out of 112 deaths, five out of 112 were potentially preventable um, pre-hospital pre deaths. Five out of 112 pre-hospital deaths were identified as potentially preventable. Um, five out of 12. I want to compare that to the Number five out of, oh, sorry, five out of 112. We'll just say five out of 100. I'm just going to round it to five out of 100 um, with 480, what's 480? 
what's the number? 486. 486 gun fatalities in the city of Philadelphia in 2021. Uh, we'll, we'll say that's, that's about 24 of them. 24 lives. I'm, I'm rounding here. I'm estimating 22 to 24 range um, lives that could have been saved had somebody on the scene when the gunshot first happened um, or gunshots first happened may have been able to keep them alive. And considering that 31 of those 486 fatalities were children, it's definitely worth it. Okay, so um, that is how lives can be saved. Now, your question was specifically, how can CPR stop violence? So um, I'm going to go to employment for this one. So here is a list of jobs that employers who hire for these positions, they either require first aid training, CPR and first aid training, or they make you get CPR and first aid training before they actually officially hire you, or they give preferential hiring to people who have CPR and first aid training for these jobs. So we've got a truck driver, a roadside highway worker, warehouse associate, emergency medical responder, of course, kindergarten teacher, summer camp counselor, shop hand, skilled laborer, pump operator, industrial scaffolder, general construction labor, in industrial coder, not sure what that is, um, overhead door installer, carpenter, forest technician, um, arborist, oh cool, okay, got that, um, AG operations specialist. Don't know what they mean by AG. Agriculture, agriculture operations specialist. Aquatic coordinator, lifeguard, security guard, cleaner, sales representative. That one's a little bit of a shock to me. Um, these are all jobs that having a Red Cross CPR and first aid certification gives you a foot in the door. This is a, this is a training a certificate that if someone holds it, it can help them get a job. Okay, what does that have to do with preventing violence? You can search uh, scholar.google.com or if you have access, um, JSTOR, um, that's the uh, journal storage system. Um, if you have access to that, you need to have some kind of um, academic affiliation, I think, to have access to JSTOR. Um, but you can do that research on your own. It is definitely proven that diminishing the unemployment rate within the community also diminishes both violent and nonviolent crime in that community. So getting people this training can increase their employability, thus reducing the unemployment rate in that community, which will definitely have a negative impact on violence. So um, hope this is helpful. I look forward to your donation.